Marcus, what do you see from the Pittsburgh defense that you guys have to try to beat? Yeah, well, first and foremost, starts up front uh, with Cam Hayward and TJ Watt. And then you look on the back end, Minka Fitzpatrick is playing at a high level. Um, so it, it, week in and week out, we talk about it. It's always going to be a challenge. Um, but this will be fun. It's, it's always fun going against this team. Arthur talked, has talked several times, actually, about the pocket in the NFL, the reality of what the pocket is like. Can you talk about that and how condensed it is and chaotic, if, if that's the right word? Well, actually, I would say, like, from college to NFL, I think that's the biggest, like, challenge that young quarterbacks have to realize is like in college like you're playing it feels like you got all day back there and you got you know there's plenty of space um when you get to this level you know the athletes on that side of the ball and what defenses are trying to do with condensing the pocket making it tough playing you making you play in small spaces um that was for me initially that was something that i, I really felt um was something that, that you have to kind of get used to and, and understand so um, being able to, to work those things in practice, it's like you got to play in a phone booth and understand that sometimes you're not going to have your legs to throw the ball. Um, being able to, to create power um, without stepping into it and striding into it, um, those are things that you have to adjust to, especially coming from the college game. Beyond the physical adjustments and challenges that it creates, what about just the mentality of, of understanding and getting used to operating in that environment? Yeah, I think you just have to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Um, you know, when you look at it, right, like, some of those throws that you have to make, you have to be able to have a guy kind of on you or you got guys in your face and, um, you know, guys are getting their hands up, for instance, in, in the last play of the game. And, um, you know, those are things that as a quarterback, you have to kind of naturally feel. Um, those are things that you can try to emulate and practice. Um, but it's hard, right? Like you can't be looking out at the rush and then try to figure out where the progression is going. You got to be able to play with your eyes up and kind of feel the, what's going on in the pocket. Are you hearing anything at that point? I mean, what's that? What's it like inside your head? Can you hear the guy? Can you <laughs> um, hear the stuff around you? Do you block it out? Do you? I don't. Honestly, I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty, pretty zoned, zoned in. Really, like I don't really hear things. I think um, from the standpoint, I just kind of play, and um, you know, I, I'm very, very big on trusting my instincts and kind of feeling the game. Um, you know, I don't really like try to think out there because more times than not, when I'm thinking, it's not, it's not going to be good. I understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> How many times a game do you get to make a practice throw, make a you know just warm up throw? In that you're standing back there, you take your full stride, you take your full th follow through. How many oh, times man. does that really happen on a uh, Sunday? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a great question. Um, you know, I'd say probably fifty percent of the time. You know, half the time I think you're really like in your drop making your first progression or second progression, you're stepping up, making a throw. I think a good majority of the, the NFL throws, especially in this game, are things that are happening where there's things around your feet, you know, there's people in your face, you got to step up, kind of move around. Um, so those are things that, that you try to emulate in practice, but more times than not, it's just being able to experience it in the game. Thank you. At, at the risk of sounding reductive here, um, you know, with what you guys have left on the schedule, does, does this game feel like, you know, it's a cliche term, but like a must win, but like, does it feel like more important just given that, you know, the home games are running out and there are only so more, many opportunities to kind of make up ground? Right. I, I really, yes, to, the, to answer your question, um, you got to have that mindset, especially playing meaningful football in December. Um, you know, these situations don't come around very often. Um, you got to understand, like, to be able to progress and to be able to team that's consistently playing games like this, you got to understand the situation and play with a little bit of urgency. Um, so it's helping these young guys understand kind of the moment we're in um, and just going out there and, and really putting, putting forth your best football. That way you can go out there and give it all you got. How do you balance the urgency, though, with the one play at a time? I, I think it, it's being able to see the big picture. I think Art does a great job of helping us understand like where we're at and then from there, it's like, in order to achieve what you want to achieve, you got to be focused on the present and taking care of your play and doing your job one, one job at a time. Uh, Coach had, uh, announced that Kyle Pitts had a uh, procedure and he's done for the rest of the season. Uh, talk about, we talked with uh, Michael, Michael, and uh, in your connection in, uh, in Tennessee, and just how valuable is it to have a guy like that that you're already familiar with, especially with Kyle Dow? Very, very important. Um, the chemistry that we've built over time uh, in Tennessee has really helped us kind of kick it off uh, pretty seamlessly um, to start right away. And 
he, he does a great job. Um, like I said, he does a lot of the dirty work and then does a great job in the passing game as well, creating explosive plays. Um, credit goes to him. Um, it's tough, right? Like, you know, you go through 10 weeks, 11 weeks, and, you know, you're not really filling that role, and then all of a sudden things happen, and now you're kind of thrust into that role. But he's done a great job, and we're very thankful he's here. And, and what do you, when you talk about that sense of urgency, it feels like for you guys especially, it's like it's, a, it's, it's one play or one touchdown away just from being on the other side and being on that win. What do you guys, I don't know, when you're looking back at the tape, feel like it's kind of just been missing? Well, I, I don't think necessarily you look at it in a negative light. I think we look at it in a positive, right? Like we put ourselves in these situations. We've gotten ourselves out of holes. We've gotten ourselves to have opportunities to play meaningful football. Now it's like, okay, Let's just find ways to do it for four quarters and put forth our best game. Because um, I really believe if we're able to do that, um, more times than not, we'll find ways to win. It's just the consistency, I think, has hurt us and has, has really costed us a few of these games. And um, with that being said, I do, I do believe it's building a foundation, not only for this season, but for the future. And, and guys should believe in that and trust it. Going back to the phone booth analogy, on that last play, the tip pass, did you feel like you were in a phone booth on that one? Was it just difficult to, to process everything? You know what? I, our guys did an unbelievable job, really, um, because I felt like I had space. And it's it's a credit to um, Duran for making a play like that. I think our guys did a great job of blocking him. And D-line coaches, defensive coaches talk about all the time, if you're getting blocked, OK, now find, find ways to knock the ball down. And he did a great job of that in that instance. So. Um, our guys did a great job of blocking. He made a play. Um, that's the NFL. Yeah. And your cleats you're wearing on Sunday. We got the, a sneak peek of them. Can you talk about the design and the inspiration behind that? Absolutely. Um, Shoes That Fit is uh, the nonprofit that my foundation is working with. Um, we actually did an event earlier in Atlanta. We were able to, to give shoes to about 100 kids, um, some new Nikes, which is always kind of cool. Um, with that being said, I, I love um, Shoes That Fit, what they're trying to do. Um, I really believe that, you know, there's a sense of pride. I'm, I'm a sneakerhead myself, so <laughs> having a brand new pair of sneakers, whether it's going out to play, uh, whether it's going to school, does make you feel good. So I'm glad that um, my foundation, Motivate, and Choose That Fit were able to collab and, and do something, and I'm excited to be able to be a part of that on Sunday. How many pairs do you have? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't even want to say. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Are you north of 200? I, I'm, around, I'm around. I'm around that area, probably. Yeah. We should, we should well, I'm around two hundred. That's what I'm around. Yeah. We should, we should go some pants and shoes. I'm a one. I'm a one low. So any any one low. Um, I mean, my my favorite's always been the breads. Um, but I think it's just an easy classic shoe that you can wear with anything.